Okay, guys. So again, we're going to be talking about uh, morning routines, and we're going to be talking about um, uh, I'm thinking it's six lifesavers, um, things to do every morning that will help change your routine, help change your um, mindset, and help get you going for the day. And literally, you guys, like I've been doing this for nine days now. Nine, I think nine. Oh my gosh, complete game changer. So I'm excited to see what you guys think. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say and any thoughts, aha moments. Even if any of you guys already do this already, you've already heard of it, please let us know. Um, anything you guys have, put it in the chat because I'm going to go through each one of these um, things. And then as soon as I'm done, we'll go through the chat and go through all the aha moments. Um, anybody has anything to say or pitch in, we will do that. So let's get rolling. And again, this will be recorded. So, um, and then I'll try to type as much as I can so you guys can copy and paste it or have it for the notes as well. So let's get started. And what I mean about um, your morning lifesavers and things that will help change your routine is each one of these um, letters stand for something. Um, it is six powerful, proven personal development practices known as lifesavers that will help you um, gain access to the powerful forces within you. It'll enable you to alter, change, and transform any area of your life. Um, so here we go. The first one, whoops, we have a couple of people hopping on. Okay, sorry. Okay, so the first one is going to be S which is gonna stand for your first lifesaver, and that is gonna be, S is gonna be for silence. Um, silence is the first practice of the lifesavers, and it may be one of the most significant areas for improving improvement for our noisy, fast-paced, and overstimulated lifestyles. Um, and I can 100% attest to this because I never just sit, um, hang tight, there we go. Um, I never just sit in silence and just reflect, you know, and I feel like when I get started for the day, I'm just like up and at it and rolling and moving and this way and that way. And I think about it and I'm like, gosh, you know, if I would just sit every morning just in silence and in peace before I picked up my phone, before I picked up my book, before I did anything, ate breakfast and just sat there in silence, how much more calm I would feel. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was working my nine to five job, I always woke up either stressed or, you know, I was like, you don't even wake up in the mood or this or that, you know, just something, right? And it's typically how you go to bed is how you wake up. Um, and so I love that. So the first thing is silence. Um, have a purposeful, um, simplified meaning that you are engaged in appearance, a period of silence with a highly beneficial purpose in mind, not just for the heck of it. You know, thinking about, um, it's a, this is one of the most powerful statements from this book that I'm reading, it says, this is the most powerful statement from a very wise man. It says, you can learn more in an hour of silence than you can in a year from books. How crazy is that? So think about that for a minute, just reflecting in silence every single morning when you wake up. Um, this can be anything from meditation. This can be anything from prayer. This can be from reflection. This can be from deep breathing. This can be from gratitude. Um, I can't remember which top leader. So if any of you guys know who I'm talking about, say in the chat, but um, a top leader that puts five things that they're um, thankful for and they read them out loud to themselves or they just read them every morning, then five things at night. And that's kind of like their silence reflection mode. Um, so they're going, they're waking up grateful and thankful and they're going to bed thankful. And I thought that was pretty cool um, because I always leave everything in my office. I typically don't work on the couch as much as I used to or my, I don't ever work in my bed anymore. Um, so I have usually everything in here and I was thinking about that. I was like, if I would just put just a couple of things by my bedside that are peaceful, that are calming, that, you know, reflecting things like that, I would wake up with that silence, that gratitude um, to start my day or that meditation. So whatever you feel would help with your silence first thing in the morning. The next one is A for lifesavers and A is for affirmations. And probably one of my favorites. Um, it's a repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. Once that belief becomes um, a deep conviction, things begin to happen. So it is no coincidence that most of the successful people in our society um, and many more 
celebrities such as Will Smith, Jim Carrey, um, Muhammad Ali have all been vocal about their belief um, that positive thinking and the use of affirmations has helped them on their journey to success and wealth. Um, whether, you not, whether or not you realize it, believe it, or think it, um, talking to oneself is not just for crazy people. Every single one of us have an internal dialogue that runs through our head and almost nonstop right? Most of it is unconscious that we don't consciously choose the dialogue. Instead, we allow our past experiences, both good and bad, to replay over and over. So, you know, even when we're thinking, you know, I am diamond, I am diamond, I am diamond, and we're still letting that devil in, you know, sometimes we don't even realize it, right? Sometimes we don't even realize that the affirmations that we're thinking aren't good affirmations. And so um, oftentimes we always say that what we think is what we become, right? Um, very few people take responsibility for actively choosing to think positive and proactive thoughts that will in return add value to their lives. Um, and then this was an interesting thing that I read about, um, I think it was Will Smith, I want to say. Yeah, Will Smith. He talked about, let me see if I can find it. If not, I'm just going to say it as I can. I don't know where that in the book, but he talked about that when he first started his career, you guys, as a celebrity um, he, and an actor, he was saying that by 19, I think it was like 1995, he said, I'm going to, he wrote himself a $10 billion check. Um, and that was something that we've done before as a team training and um, we've done the checks. So you print out your, it works check and you put your monthly income on it. Right. And then you hang it on your wall or on your dream board or however you want. Um, and Will Smith put $10 billion. Um, and he said, in 10 years, I'm going to write myself a $10 billion check. Um, and that was by 1995. Crazy, right? It's like 2016. I thought about that. I was like, oh my gosh, can you imagine how wealthy he is now? But it, he ended up accomplishing that $10 billion check in 1994. So he ended up writing that check nine years rather than 10, um, all because creating that belief and that affirmation that he was going to do it. And I think about affirmations, you guys, and you know, I have my goals written on my whiteboard in my office. I have them on my phone. I have them, you know, several different places, but it does no good if you don't say it out loud, right? Um, it does no good... If you, thank you, Nicole. I was wondering, Will Smith, I don't freaking know. Um, so it does no good if you just write them down. You have to speak them. You have to say them out loud. You have to believe them because it sounds crazy, but when I first was told you, you have to say this out loud, I thought to myself, I, I'm like, I'm not saying this out loud. I'm not repeating this over and over and over again. You know, I have it written down, but I can tell you there's so much difference in saying it out loud than first, just first having it written down. Um, your self-talk has a dramatic influence on your level of success in every aspect of your life. Um, oh, okay. In every aspect of your life, confidence, health, happiness, wealth, and relationships. Your affirmations are either working for or against you, depending on how you, you are using them. If you don't consciously design and choose your affirmations, you are subsequent, sub I can't say that word, subsequent. <laughs> Because I cannot talk tonight. To repeating and relieving the fears, insecurities, and limitations of your past. Um, so number one, again, was um, S is for silence. A is for affirmations. And the first two things for your miracle morning. Um, your next one is visualization. And I think this is something that goes hand in hand with affirmations a lot. Um, is creating that visual picture of what you want. And like Pam Satter always says, is, you know, you want a new car, but do you know what the inside looks like? Do you know what the steering wheel looks like? Do you know if you want leather? What kind of interior do you want? Do you know what it smells like? Um, is it comfortable? How many seats? How many seat belts? Like, and she goes all the way down to the T. And I always think about that, that when we visualize our goals, we visualize our dream home or we visualize that vacation, do we go all the way down to our flight, you know, our ticket times, the airline we're flying out of, you know, how much spending money we're going to have and just really visualizing to the T of what you want. Um, and I love this part of the lifesavers because I'm such a visual person that I think about things a lot. Sometimes I tend to overthink, but if I can visualize good things rather than bad and steer, keep my blinders on, I typically love to visualize. So, um, Many highly successful individuals, including celebrities, have advocated the use of visualization, claiming that it's a played um, and significant role in their success. So, you know, really visualizing what you want and then asking yourself, you know, what do you visualize? Writing it down. Um, 
And then keep having that clear picture, you guys, um, whether that be visualizing with your dream board, a vision board, your goals, whatever that may be, that you can think of, but write them down so you can see them. And then that seeing them is going to turn into that affirmation, right? And that affirmation is going to turn into belief. Um, so again, S was for silence. A was affirmations. B was visualizing. And then E is exercise. Um, and morning and exercise should be a um, a staple in your daily ritual, whether it's 60 seconds, 20 minutes, or an hour, whatever you choose. When you exercise for even a few minutes every morning, it significantly boosts your energy, enhances your health, improves self-confidence, and emotional well-being, and enables you to think better and concentrate longer. And then it goes on to say, you know, if you're too busy for exercise or there's so much in your routine already in the morning, you know, how do you fit it in? Um, and something that I loved, um, that Hale said, the author is, he talked about, you know, just get up. When you wake up in the morning, get out of bed, get up, get up and, you know, do jumping jacks for 60 seconds, do push ups, do steps, do something to get your blood flowing, your body moving, um, and to really take on and tackle the day. And I think that's something that I think a lot of us, you know, think to ourselves, like, gosh, well, even I think somebody sent here yoga. I think somebody said that. I think it was Nicole. Yep, Nicole said yoga. Um, I was talking about yoga, and that was one thing that he said he loved. And, you know, I've always wanted to do yoga, always. I'm always like, that just looks so fun. It looks so relaxing. But I think I've done it, like, once in my life, and it was hot yoga, and I ended up walking out because I couldn't breathe. I was like, this is just not my thing. So regular yoga, I'm thinking, you know what? That sounds something that I think I would love because it's relaxing. Um, and, and I can do my silence kind of moment during it being able to reflect and visualize at the same time. So tackle a couple birds with one stone. Um, and then R is for reading. And this kind of goes off of our personal development, you guys. So um, the key is to learn from the experts, those who have already done what you want to do. Don't reinvent the wheel. And the fastest way to achieve everything you want is to model success, um, successful people who have already achieved it. With an almost infinite amount of books available on every single topic, there are no limits to the knowledge you can gain through um, daily reading. So being a student, you guys, just as much as being a teacher, because if we want our teams to grow and we want our teams to learn, how do we expect them to learn and grow if we're not growing, right? Um, we want to get to this ultimate goal, but to get there, we have to grow in the process. We have to learn in the process, and we have to develop into that person we want to become. Um, something that I always think about too is that, you know, when we first get started is we really want to be a ruby. We really want to be an emerald. We really want to be a diamond, but it takes a lot of growth and change and development along the way. And, you know, when I first started this business three years ago, I am a, I am the same person as I was three years ago. The only difference is my growth. The only difference is my belief. The only difference is, you know, I believe 100% in this um, company. I trust 100% what corporate does. Um, I have such a passion for the products, passion for the compensation plan, passion for helping people look good and feel good. Um, and in return, it helps us as well. So that's something that I love about personal development is that if you want to get where you want to go, you have to develop and learn along the way. So personal development is so crucial. And again, whether that's five minutes, you guys, whether that's 10 minutes or a couple of pages, I always challenge myself that no matter what time I have, I just do like 10 minutes, 10 minutes every morning. Um, and it's crazy when you set, I always set like a timer on my phone or I turn on do not disturb and set that timer. 10 minutes goes a long way with personal development. Um, and then the S in Lifesavers um, is scribing. So the final practice and it's really just another word for writing. Honestly, um, it allows you to put your thoughts on paper so or journaling. And I know some people in here like to blog too. So however you kind of like to do it, but five to 10 minutes, getting your thoughts out of your head and putting them in writing. You gain valuable insights you, you'd otherwise never see. Um, so document your insights, your ideas, your breakthroughs, realization, success, lessons learned. Um, I'm going to type it here, Megan, just a second. I'll give it to you. Um, so as well as any areas of opportunity, personal growth, improvement, but I think this kind of goes along with, I would say our goals. So gaining clarity of what you want, capturing ideas, um, reviewing 
you know, what you want for the week or your game plan for the week and then following up with how did it go? You know, did you keep the course, stay the course or do you need to work up in certain areas? Um, and then acknowledging your process or your progress and celebrating that along the way because I think sometimes we get so caught up in the middle, right? That we forget where we started, how far we've come and then where we're going. And you guys, there are so many days where I do that and I get discouraged and I think to myself, gosh, you know, you've been in this business three years, three years. Think about what has happened to people you have met, um, things that you've accomplished, dream board checkoffs, you know, make sure to celebrate your success, your team success. Um, and then don't forget where you're headed. Don't get blindsided by the middle effect, Be, but I also want you to enjoy the middle because the middle is one of the funnest parts because once you hit that goal and you hit that last submit button for that promotion, you sign that distributor you've been waiting to sign for six months, that loyal customer finally wants to be a loyal customer after being retail for a year. It is the best feeling to look back and say, gosh, I did it, right? It is the best feeling of accomplishment. Um, so now looking back on this, um, he was saying that the miracle morning typically can be about 60 minutes, um, but you can kind of tweak this how you want to tweak it and what you kind of think would be um, the best way for you and your schedule. So I'm going to type this out really quick just so you guys can see it. So he talks about doing silence um, for five minutes. He talks about affirmations for five minutes. Um, visualization for five minutes, exercise for 20 minutes, um, reading 20, and then scribing for five. Okay. So total time is 60 minutes, but again, customize it to what you think would work for you and your schedule. Um, this one was 60 minutes total. Um, but tweak it, you guys. So if you think about it and you're like, you know, I do have 20 minutes in the morning or I have 30 minutes in the morning. Um, it was interesting what he did, though, with he broke it down to six minutes for those people that you often hear, you know, I don't have time. I work a full-time job, full-time mom, full-time wife, you know, I'm trying to do the business on the side. And those people that you're like, you need some kind of reflection, right? You need some kind of personal development. You need some kind of growth throughout the day. So we talked about, I love this. I'm going to share this with you really quick. Those of you that have a busy schedule already, and you're already feeling like, gosh, one more thing to my plate, right? So we talked about this six minute miracle morning and I love this. So minute one. Envisioning yourself waking up peacefully in the morning with a big yawn and stretch and a smile on your face. Instead of rushing carelessly into your hectic day, stressed and overwhelmed, you spend the first minute just sitting quiet in silence. One minute. Minute number two, you pull out your daily affirmations, ones that remind you of your unlimited potential and your most important priorities, and you read them out loud from the top to bottom. As you focus on what's more important to you, your level of internal motivation increases. Reading over the reminders of how capable you really are gives you a feeling of confidence, a feeling of belief, and a sense that you too can do this. Um, it'll help you live the life you truly want and deserve and know that it is possible for you. Minute three, you close your eyes and look at your vision board or your dream board, whatever you may have, and you visualize and see those goals until you reach them. You visualize the day going perfectly, seeing yourself enjoying work, smiling and laughing with your family, your significant, significant other, and easily accomplishing all that you intend to accomplish for that day. Minute three is done. Now on to minute four, you take one minute to write down some of the things you're grateful for, what you're proud of, and the results you're committed to creating for that day. Minute five, you grab a self-development book and you read five pages. That's it. Um, every day you can either apply that to your day. And I think this kind of goes along to you guys that the days where you're feeling rushed, the days that you're feeling like lost or you're feeling all over the place, pull, place, pull out a book and just open it. Just open it and I guarantee thoughts will come to mind, aha moments, clarity, something will click for you. So no matter what you do that day, pull out a book and just read a couple pages. You will discover something new that you can, that'll make you think or feel better or change an affirmation, right? Um, and then minute six. So finally you stand up for the last 
a minute moving your body for 60 seconds. So maybe you're running in place, you're doing jumping jacks, just something to get your heart blood flowing. You're generating that energy. Um, so imagine just utilizing even six minutes. So even Tammy, how you were saying, you know, I have to be at school at 7.45, um, I need less than 60, 60 minutes. So there you go, six minutes to get to work. You could use this, you know, minute one was your envision. Number minute two was your affirmations. Um, minute three was your visualiz visualization. Um, minute four was your clarity and writing things down what you're grateful for. Minute five was your personal development. And minute six was getting active. So as I was going through this, you guys, I thought about, you know, how quick we are to make excuses and how quick we are to say we don't have time for this we don't have time for that and when in reality it's just making the time it's just set aside the time and, and when i look at the 60 minute total right here i look at myself and i'm like gosh that's an hour that's an hour and when i first saw that i was like okay i probably have to get up at five and do it till six and then tyson gets to go to work at 6 30 and then nixon gets up between about 6 30 and 7. but then i thought about you know what when I go to bed, if I choose to go to bed in a good mood and I wake up and tell myself today's going to be a good day, I'm going to do this, it's going to be a good day and this is what's going to happen. That's what he was talking about um, a lot in the book too is how your attitude affects your day, how your attitude affects your business, how your attitude affects your personal development and your growth um, within your miracle morning as well. So with that being said, um, does this – kind of help maybe some clarity of like when to do things, how to do things, really how to get up and move it in the morning. Those of you that are not morning people, I would love to hear from you and kind of see maybe what some aha moments are for you or what you're kind of thinking, um, maybe how your wheels are spinning of what you're going to do and take from this from now on. Those of you that don't normally do things in the morning. If you want to share it, go ahead and unmute yourself or put, um, Put it in the chat. I know a couple of read it. I, I know that when I read this, um, it was a really, really eye opener, like a major eye opener. I started reading it like I, it was like way earlier this year. Um, but it actually made me want to get up earlier in the morning and I was like more motivated after reading this. And then when I did um when I was reading this. I was setting my alarm like earlier than what I would usually do. That way I was getting up earlier and it's, I really recommend getting this book because it was, it's very motivating and it's definitely an eye opener. Yeah. And even being a morning person, like another hour, you're like, Oh my gosh, another hour. <laughs> I was already a morning person. Now we're like, you know, and I thought about that, but it's totally your mindset. I mean, I don't know about you Taylor, but for me, mine was like, Nope, set your alarm and just do it. Just do it, you know? Um, I'm putting it right now for you guys. Author. And it was interesting because he was saying, go back through and read it again. And so I, that's what I've been doing this weekend is I went back through it and pulled a bunch of things from it and highlighted a bunch from it and put some tags and markers and just got a lot of, I would say, training and aha moments from it and really a lot of clarity about certain things that I'm like, gosh, you know, I need to be more effective with my morning time rather than just do maybe a little bit of personal development or maybe a little bit of this, but really just utilizing that hour that I have and doing each one of those things. It's really helped start my day. Um, so for me, um, I like to wake up and I kind of check my phone. Like when I first wake up, like do when I like that until <laughs> I actually like have my eyes adjusted and then I go downstairs and it's funny because I haven't, now that I think about it, I haven't done it in like two weeks, but for a while, like every day for months, I was doing my yoga and then meditation. And then I'd read for like 30 minutes from my book, whatever I was reading. I really need to get back into that habit now after hearing this Zoom, but kind of just going over a recap of everything that you were saying. I mean... Some people will listen to what you have to say on this Zoom or listen to the recording and be like, oh my gosh, I could totally, you know, spend five minutes or 20 minutes before my day starts and like do some of these things. And then other people will think like, oh, I don't have time for that. And that's what sets us apart is, you know, those people with one mindset versus the other. So, yeah. Um, 
I like that you said that too, because even that comparison he was talking about, you know, there's always going to be um, a bad apple in the bunch that tries to say, you know, I don't have time. I don't have time. I, you know, I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have a rock star team. I don't have runners. And they're always trying to say something right to damper the mood. But you really, really want to focus on those of you guys that are on tonight. There are 29 of you made a choice. It's Labor Day weekend, you know, and it not meaning don't have fun with your families or don't do this or don't do that. But it's meaning you took the extra 30 minutes on a vacation holiday weekend, you know, to put the time into this. And that's what's going to get you to the top, you guys. Um, there are so many, I mean, I tell my leaders this quite a bit, but there are so many nights um, and days where I'm exhausted, I'm not in the mood, I don't feel like doing a Zoom, but I do it because of you guys. I do it because I know my goal and I don't work this business based on how I feel. I work this business based on what I want, regardless of what happens during the day, regardless of what gets thrown at me, regardless of like Nicole said, somebody that says I don't have time to do the miracle morning, Great. Well, I do. Right. So more room at the top. So think of it that way. Think of the attitude that, you know what, I am going to set my, um, I'm going to lead my team by example and I'm going to start this. Even if I'm not a morning person, I'm going to be effective and intentional with my time. I'm going to set my alarm one hour earlier and see what happens. And it was interesting too how he said that when you're creating a habit, um, it's going to be hard, just like going to the gym. It's going to take about two to three months to create that habit and create that, okay, I want to do it again. You know, I'm enjoying this. I want to do it again. And you're going to slip back. I mean, you're going to fall back. You're going to, there's going to be roadblocks, but it's up to you to remember that ultimate goal and remember that, you know what, I want to create these good habits because you, you can always say there's tomorrow, there's tomorrow, there's tomorrow, right? Um, and if you keep continue to say that, it's going to be next month. You know, I really want to go diamond, but I'm super tired. I'm not going to message five people tonight. I'll message them in the morning. Um, this came up and now we have dinner and we have this and that. Okay, I'll message them Thursday. You know, and it's always going to be the next day, the next time, the next thing. And I don't have time, maybe next tomorrow. You know, I don't feel good, maybe tomorrow. And I think about that and I'm like, you know what, regardless of your schedule, regardless of what happens during the day, do something and come producing every single day, you guys. And I'm not kidding you, whether that's five minutes or five hours, do something, okay? Don't just post. Um, don't just talk to your team, do something income producing, and you will be where you want to be in no time. Because there's been so many days, and I know I can test probably half these people on this Zoom where they felt like, you know, I'm exhausted, I don't want to do anything today, but they still did it, right? They still did it to reach that goal. And I'm so excited for September because we are literally being handed, you know, $5,000 bonuses and $500 bonuses just for helping people, right? So, and in return, help yourself and grow and develop yourself so people see that and they want what you have. Because if you want to find a level 10 leader, you've got to be a level 10 leader yourself. So that being said, um, um, yeah, as may I'll post the um, recording as soon as we're done with this too, so you can watch the rest of it. Tammy said, actually thinking about my morning, I'm getting up early enough to do everything just on a full 60 minutes. I can tweak it and do a little bit more of a few things when I'm on my lunch too. Yeah, you know, do what you can. You know, do what works for you and just get in what you can because it's better to do a little bit than not at all, right? Um, does anybody have any other aha moments? I see a lot of people writing stuff down. Does anybody want to share anything that they may be writing down? Hold on, Anna. I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Nope, you're good. Um, I was just, I put like a big star next to, you were talking about just like acknowledging your, pro your progress, right? Because there's so much of this business that's like, it's your mind. It's how, it's how you feel personally. Like it doesn't always matter like what your paycheck looks like or any of that. Like I can say over a year, like looking if I really look at where I was at, like I'm healthy, I'm healthy now, like inside, you know, like there's a lot of power in that. I don't know anywhere else I could work a job and like grow, just grow, grow, grow like that. So yeah. But yeah, you know, and I, I love that too. And, and you know, 
you know, money <clears throat> you know, gives you options. It is definitely a bonus, but there's so much more of this business. And I really don't, I think people pass it up so much, you know, or don't even realize what all there is to offer. Like you said, the products, the friendships, the community, you know, the faith based, our corporate team, you know, there is just so much about this company that we can grab hold to. And I love that, you know, not everybody has to be good at one thing, right? You know, not everybody has to know every product, you know, not everybody has to, you know, do this and that. And it's just, it's so simple and truly, we are so blessed in this company. We truly are. And we have something that everybody wants or needs, right? So I love that you shared that, that you were saying, you know, what job a year ago could I look back and say, you know, I got healthier, you know, and I'm happier and I've created these friendships and yes, I've made money, but you know, can you really sit there and say that, you know, I sat at my desk for a year and I'm healthier, you know, or I'm happier, that sort of thing. So I love that. That's such a great point to point out that celebrating where you started, how far you've come and the person you were, you know, really looking back at when you started and where you are today. You know, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Anna. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have anything else that they want to share? We have about five minutes left. Um, I would just say something about the self um, affirmation. Can you hear me, Allie? Go ahead, babe. Um, so I saw that someone had mentioned like how that's a really hard thing for them. And I just want to point out that I think it's a really hard thing for most people, not even just women to say positive self affirmations to themselves. And it is difficult. And I've talked with like a counselor, like in years past, and that was like an exercise that was given out time and time and time again of just list things that you like about yourself or say nice things about yourself or think nice things, but really it just comes down to starting to believe those things about yourself, like that you are worthy of all of this, that you are an amazing person, that you, you know, you can meet your goals and you can do whatever you put your mind to. And that is the first step is saying that, yes, I can do this and I'm worth it. And it is difficult, but you have to start somewhere and you have to you know, it could be as simple as looking yourself in the mirror and saying, you're freaking awesome. You're going to do this. I know you can do it. You can do this. And just like, it does sound silly, but really like writing it in your journal, saying it to yourself in the morning when you're standing there, putting your makeup on, thinking it to yourself, like it's got to start somewhere. And if you don't think it, then it's not going to happen. So I, I really think that that's a really big part that a lot of people overlook or are just really uncomfortable doing because they've never done that for themselves before in the past, but you got to start somewhere. Oh my gosh. Yes. I totally agree, Megan. Isn't it funny how we don't want to do it, but when we do it, we love it. Right. <laughs> and then it totally changes our mindset, it changes our belief. And it's, it's like a downline effect you know, and people can see that and feel that about you, right? They can see the difference in your happiness and your spirit, the way you act, the way you talk, the way you think, your personality. Um, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Megan. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with this business, you guys. This is such a mind game. It totally is. You know, you guys, it's 90% your mind and 10% your hard work. Honestly, you get your mind right and you put belief in yourself and you tell yourself you're going to do this and you're never going to give up and you're going to be successful. You're going to be consistent. You are good at this just like everybody that was talking about Anna and Megan, Taylor and Nicole and everybody talked about and spoke how they said your mind is such a crucial game and it will play with you, honestly, good or bad. So it's up to you to decide, you know, are you going to remain positive? Are you going to continue to build that belief within yourself. Um, as Mark Pentecost said tonight, you guys, our CEO, he said, hungrier people work harder. So I want you to ask yourself, are you hungry? You know, how bad do you want this business? You know, how much do you believe in yourself? Can you do just a little bit more, a little bit more each and every day? 
So with that being said, we're about 30 seconds from getting cut off tonight, but I really appreciate all of you guys um, being on here tonight and sharing your insight and your ahas. And I'm excited to apply these lifesavers into um, our team. And I think this will be a big game changer for everybody too, as we get our minds right. Um, our goals will be right on track. So real quick, Amanda said, I read this quote once. It said, your mind has to get at the destination before your life does. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I love that. I wish we could save the chat. <laughs> we record. I wish you could like read the chat as you went back and read it, but I don't think you can. Um, so thanks guys. Thanks again, everybody for being on. And I will post this link as soon as we get done. But have an amazing rest of your weekend, an awesome Labor Day tomorrow. Enjoy your time with your family and your friends. Um, and I will chat with you guys soon. If you have anything, please let me know. But continue to kick some butt. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Have a good night, guys.